Zoom tov l'kim. Zoom tov l'ka. We give our thanks to the Most High for so many things, for sparing our lives to be here and for allowing us to once again have some semblance of a congregation and an assembly before the Creator. I'm extremely grateful for His mercies that He's shown to us. We want to welcome and say shalom to all of the families that are online and for those that were able to come out tonight. Uh, we can't fully uh, gather, but we're going to be opening up more and more. I spoke with uh, Lusama and got the word in the hospital that the cases in Guyana are very few now. So we will be having gradually more and more people coming out as we watch throughout the holy season, realizing that a lot of people were in the country. And so we're just going to give a short amount of time to see how things turn out between now and the end of the holy season. And we'll be able to determine whether we can open up fully to have our gatherings with all of the congregation coming before you. Again, we want to ask the Most High to bless all of the families across the length and breadth of this earth that are gathered in their homes, elders, children, youth in their ages of young adults, and even many people who have gathered for the very first time to do a fast. I pray the Most High will give you the strength to not break the fast and to keep it. Praying that all of us and our children who perhaps tomorrow will be here will be encouraging and motivating to those people who are doing this for the first time and that they will learn that it's a culture, it's a way of life, and it's also something very, very important when we understand the sins that we've committed as a nation in our own families. We from the speaker before the microphone to each and every one of you. No one is without sin. We are all guilty. And many times we don't realize that some are more guilty than others, but a sin is a sin. And you can't be the judge as to what the Most High is gonna count as the one that ends your existence. So no one should be on this night, anything but contrite and humble as we call on the Most High. This time to open up our day, our very evening, uh, we're going to have Cohen Shape lead us in the opening song that we'll have for tonight. It's What's My Name, very appropriate song that speaks to who we are and even why we are here. We're here because we are the guilty nation. We're the example before the whole world to what happens to a people in a nation that violates the everlasting covenant that covers all humanity. And we are witnessing and we'll see some things tonight to let us know that we had our time when Yah put his hand upon us and now we are witnessing his hand upon the nation. And we have to be very aware that it's more to our return because this night is about a return back to Yah from the sins that we've committed, trying to get back on the path of righteousness or be stronger on that path of righteousness. But we have to also remember that we're responsible for what's happening in the world today. Many people serving false gods, evil has mounted up beyond even the imagination. Things are happening today that are totally unimaginable. And so again, we pray that Most High will hear those silent prayers. Tonight is more about, and today, you, you the individual, you humbling your spirit, going within yourself and praying deeply about yourself to the Most High. And so we hope that you'll be able to capture that Ruach because that's what it's going to take. 
the right spirit will be accepted before Yah. So let us at this time sing with Cohen Shape uh, the song, What's My Name? And the song speaks for itself. Todaraba. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Zoom Tov Lechulam. Zoom Tov Lecha. Again, my name is Cohen Shape Mia Ben Cohen Levi Ben Yisrael. And I have the honor and the pleasure of leading you in this song, What's My Name, on this eve of Yom Kippur, the Day of Atonement. May Yah find us all acceptable. In progress. Hallelujah. 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 I, 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 I this whole world over. And in birth, in no man's feet I've not been under. What's my name? I've been chained, whipped and beaten, slavery, my only fame, even my soul. The nation's plunder, what's my name, what's my name, who could care for none doth stand with me I alone have to bear my grief and misery comes the day my yah is tired way the heathens use his name and he'll tear my Bonds asunder, then you hear when I proclaim, then you hear when I proclaim. Israel, Israel, Israel is my name. Hallelujah. Merciful Father, power of our ancient forefathers, of thy servant Abraham, Yitzchak, and Yaakov, we thank thee for the knowledge of the same. We thank thee for once again allowing us to see another holy season in the month of Itani, we do not take 
this day, this season, or our existence for granted. We thank you for the lives of each and every one of us. We thank you for our families. No one is an island. The only way to enter this world is through a family. And you've chosen to give us an inheritance in your inheritance, chosen to serve thee forever and ever. We are here in lands of captivity because of our disobedience. We have sinned for thousands of years. And in your mercy, you've not cut us off as a people. There are nations that are no longer here, but doing less evil than we did, and for even a shorter time. Your mercy is an everlasting mercy to us, an enduring mercy, and we thank you on this day of our opportunity. It's a day of opportunity for us to once again declare, to confess, to acknowledge that we are wrong. We are the guilty ones. You are righteous, O Most High, in all of your doings, in all of your ways. You have been good unto us. In many cases, you've been better to us than we've been to our own selves. And we thank you from the bottom of our hearts and souls. We thank you because the dead praise not you, Jehovah, nor any that go down into silence. It is only the living that can praise you, oh yeah, and honor you. It's only the living that can walk in the path, the halakha of the law, the Torah, that you've set before all Israel. We know and we understand that our forefathers have sinned before thee. The prophets came often and betimes to us. And even today, among the various countries and communities, you place men and women in our midst, wise fathers and mothers, having sometimes no teachers. They are our first teachers, the Horim, coming from the word Morim, because they are our first teachers. We have not even listened to them in our growing up in years. And certainly you, our heavenly father, we have not obeyed you either. We say, Knowingly. Lifamim bili da'at. Things that we don't even know and understand. That in heaven, you've counted it against us as a violation against you. We sin against you when we sin, Yehovah. That's why we repent before you and not before one another. We are not here tonight or this day to look at the other persons, to find excuses for the things that we have done wrong, but to acknowledge sincerely, to confess sincerely that we have lied that we have stolen, that we have cheated, that we have been tail bearers in our midst. We have gossipers that sometimes in their gossiping, they don't even know that in heaven above, you are frowning on our behavior. We think that we do things in the dark, but 
all light is always before you. There is nothing hidden from your holy eyes. You hear every word we speak and you know our every thought. There is none like unto you, O Most High. We thank you for our children. And we all know who are adults that there's no age so precious that one cannot do wrong. From the day we were born unto this precious moment, we utter the words, Salak Lanu, Yehoah Eloheinu. Tika Pir Lanu, the Kol Hakatin, for all those sins that we did as teenagers. We all know none of us was pure during those delicate years of growing trying to find out right from wrong, yielding not to your righteous path, but to the temptations that you place before us to test us in such an early and delicate and tender stage of our lives. Men and women that are adults, we are all guilty. You don't grow before you, O oh Most High, where you're so righteous at any age that you cannot sin and you're not guilty before you, the Holy One of Israel. All the elders know that old age doesn't exempt you from being guilty. Sometimes it's a weakness that is our sin. Give us strength where we are weak in mind and spirit and body and in soul to do the things that are good, that are right in your eyes. Help us not to go according to our own understanding. Bless us to have a mind that seeks and look unto you to guide us, to help us in our decision making because we're all flesh and blood. Without your spirit, Without your Holy Spirit, Jehovah, we have no way of complying with those righteous teachings and instructions that you've set before us. You know that we are made to be tested. Adam and Kawa were tested from the very beginning, and they were sinners just like we are. Abraham was tested 10 times and he was a righteous man. How much more so those like unto ourselves. King Dawid, he failed in the matter with Bathsheba. We've always had men that were weak towards the opposite sex like unto Solomon. How many of us are guilty on this night in some place along our development and growth, we were weak and violated. And we may have even forgotten about it. We pray that all of our sins, you will cast them into a bottomless pit, Jehovah. Remember our families in the land of Israel. Even there, we are all aware. There's no community free of iniquity. There is no leader that has not made an error, has not been found in your eyes guilty. And if he's not, no one is presumptuous enough to think or should think that they are righteous before you. We should ever and forever be striving to spiral upward, to climb Jacob's ladder, to get closer and closer into the mount that Moshe was not afraid to go into. Give us that fear of you. Bless the crying babies. They remind us, oh Yah, of this night when we hear those children crying. That's what some of us, we don't cry because we should all be crying when we think about how good you've been to us and the things that we've done before you. Those babies remind us and they give us the humility to cry. Hear their cry, Jehovah. 
they're crying many times because they want the mother's breast or they want to drink or they want to eat. We are crying inside because we've hurt you. And you've hurt us in return. We know it in the captivity, the our punishments, the suffering that we have. All the things that we go through in life growing up is only because you're trying to teach us and help us grow into righteous men and women that are worthy to be your servants. Help us to become worthy. Sometimes we think that we deserve to be your servants. It's an honor to serve you. It's a gift to have life that can only be given by you. Bless all of the teachers, whether they be elders that are in the front of a group of people, whether they be Maureen or Morot, because many women are teaching our people as well in certain places. Bless the Kohanim and the Morim and the Misharati. And you have said we are a nation of priests. So bless every man, woman, and child to stand up for the righteous laws, statutes, and commandments that you've set before all Israel. On this night, remember all of those that are doing this for the first time. Remember those families all across the United States and our families before Cohen Shaden saw our room. Remember their Nashim, our Nashim our children and all the children and families and husbands and wives of us all. Remember the aunts, the uncles that don't know the law, the cousins that are not doing it. We're praying for them and fasting for them on this night as well. Maybe perhaps as you were merciful to Lot because of Abraham, we pray you'll be merciful to our loved ones. We pray that even though they don't know you and know the culture, we pray you'll bless them to at least know right from wrong and give them the strength to do most of the time, if not all the time, what's right so that perhaps your salvation will come unto them. Bless our children in the womb of the mothers. You know all of them by name and by spirit. Bless them to have a healthy delivery. Bless the Yaladin and Yaladot, boys and girls. Bless the Bukhorin, Bukhorot, the young men and young women that are struggling with all those temptations and tests that are before them. Bless the adults, the Ishim and the Nashim, like you used it in the book of Proverbs. Not Anashim, Ishim. We are men. Make us men of Yah. Bless the women in our nation. They carry a heavy portion, Yehovah. Remember those mothers and those women that are in desire of so many things, more than any happiness, peace, and joy, a good spouse in their lives. Remember all of those elders that are struggling with health challenges. Remember all of their days that led them to this day. Forget them not and fail them not. You brought them to old age. Let them see and be witnesses to your glory and the restoration of your people. Hear the prayers of the silent souls that are on their knees all over this world. Remember those brothers and sisters who, because of our scattering, were perhaps and perhaps will do this fast on another day or have done it. Be merciful. You're the father of mercies. None of us is perfect. We're all in some area, some place not right before you or need improvement before you. Help us to be better next year than we were this year. Grant us more life 
and more opportunities to do right. Because without life, we don't even have a chance to serve you, to get better. In your mercies, show us once again the joy and the rejoicing that you had over us when we were obedient. You have rejoiced over us, seeing us suffer and punish because of our disobedience. Let those days return, as you said by the mouth of your prophets, when you rejoice over us again for good, as you did in times of old. We thank you. We say, Modim Rabin. Silently, the voice, you can hear it all. You can see it all. Bless Kol Beit Yisrael, Eloheinu, Wa'al Ha Laila Haze, Salak Lanu, Yeho Eloheinu, Lakatotainu, Watikapir Kol Beit Yisrael, the Kanfo, Pito, Ha'ulam, Besafon, in the north, forgive them. Be Mitzrak, forgive us in the east. Be Darom, Wigam Be Negev, forgive us, Salak Lanu, Be Yama, Elohino in the West, forgive and pardon our sins wherever we are in the midst. Betoka Aritz, Penima Adama, Tikapir Amka Nakatotenu, Cold the Israel, Avinu, Avotenu, Elohe Avotenu, Abraham, Yitzka, Israel. Remember the covenant and bless us and restore it and bless us to obey the covenant of the Torah. Hallelujah! 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 Yakai! 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 Amen. Go on, Elio. O Shema Yisrael, Yahuwah Eloheinu, Yahuwah Eloheinu, Yahuwah Eloheinu. O Shema Yisrael, Yahuwah Eloheinu, Eloheinu, Yahuwah Echad. O Baruch Shem Kibot, Malku Tole Olam, Malku Tole Olam, Malku Tole Olam, O Baruch Shem Kibot. Malku tole olam le olam wa ed. O Shema Yisrael, Yahuwah Eloheinu, Yahuwah Eloheinu, Yahuwah Eloheinu. O Shema Yisrael, Yahuwah Eloheinu, Eloheinu, Yahuwah Echad. O Baruch Shem Kevot. Malku tole olam, malku tole olam, malku tole olam, o baruch shem kevot. Malku tole olam, le olam wa'ed. O shema Yisrael, Yahuwah Eloheinu, Yahuwah Eloheinu, Yahuwah Eloheinu, o shema Yisrael. Yahuwah Eloheinu, Eloheinu, Yahuwah Echad. Hallelujah. Sisters and brothers, please remain standing. We're going to say the prayer, evening prayer, in our Sidorim for this evening of Yom Kippur. And we pray that the Holy One of Israel will hear each of us individually. And collectively, as we say these words on screen, I think they'll be placed there shortly. Just want to give those that are at their homes, and many of them have never said this prayer before. We pray that they feel the spirit of a night and evening of Yom Kippur. Many of them have fasted, and they thought it was a fast. But in many communities, they drink or they fast part of the day. We'll be fasting for 24 hours. We have babies in mother's arms that are here in our center, in the temple where we worship Yah, and they are fasting. So we want 
people to know we've had children born on Yom Kippur and they fasted and they're bigger than me, many of them stronger. Because the Most High never gave us anything to hurt us. Every instruction was for our good and for our well being. Let's slowly utter these words of the prayer that is before us. Blow the horn in Zion, sanctify a fast, call a solemn assembly, gather the people, sanctify the congregation, assemble the elders, gather the children and those that suck the breast. Let the bridegroom go forth from his chamber and the bride out of her pavilion. Let the priests, the Kohanim, the ministers of Jehovah, weep between the porch and the altar, and let them say, Spare thy people, O Jehovah. Jehovah Elohim, great and awful power, that dealest in mercy, incline thine ear to the prayer of thy servants. Hear the confession of the sins we have committed against thee. We have dealt treacherously and have not kept thy commandments. We have strayed from thy law and have not acknowledged thy statute. Grant us mercy this day. We entreat and cast our sins away. Forgive us in mercy, for we are but dust. Our goodness is but a grain of sand upon the shores of eternity. In love and pity, give ear to our cries and pardon our iniquity. We come before thee because of thy great compassion. Cause thy face to shine upon us and grant us remission for thy wondrous name's sake. Hallelujah. At this time, those that are singing it for the first time, we have those strong voices of veteran Israelites who will be repeating the words on this day when this Nagun Karata is sung. The Nagun Karata is the song of repentance because we are here repenting before the Creator. And that is we are trying to show him our sorrow for the wrong that we have done. We're trying to express with our ruachs and with our minds that we are sorrowful for the things that we've done against him and in violation of the Torah and how we've even wronged each other because it's also repenting for what we've done to our fellow human beings. And so we pray that as we say these, sing this song of repentance, that Yah will look on us and hear and feel the Ruach that we are expressing on this night of remorse for the sins and the evil and the wrong that we have done. Asham Nu. Silak lanu, hey vi nu. Silak lanu, hir shanu. Silak lanu, kamat nu. Silak lanu, keys of new. Silak lanu, tai nu. Silak lanu, tea of new. Silak lanu, qui she nuoref, silak lanu, katanuk bequalat drosh, silak lanu, katanu berequilut. 
Silaklanu, Silaklanu, Katanu Bishu at Shao, Katanu Bishu at Shao, Silaklanu, Silaklanu, Katanu Billy died, Katanu Billy died, Silaklanu, Silaklanu. Kata nu beda a, kata nu beda a, silak la nu, silak la nu. The prayer below the Nagun Karata, we are all saying these words slowly again and praying that we'll be accepted as we utter these words. O oh, Yehoah, whereby shall we disclaim our sins and cause them to descend into the bottomless pit? Power of our fathers, cause all our sins to vanish from before thee. Bless our minds and hearts that we may know and do righteousness for thy name's sake. Kapil Lanu. Mika Lanu Anna Lanu Hoshi A Nu Yahua Yahua Silak Silak, silak, lanu, kapir, lanu, mika, lanu, ana, lanu. Hoshi a nu Yahua Yahua Silak 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 La nu Hallelujah. Shivu Vavakusha. Grant us remission. Pardon us. Save us, we pray. Yehoah, our power. Forgive us not. Please. Please, this time, welcome Kohen Odaya, who is going to choose two psalmists, which is our custom to do on this eve, the 25th and the 130th psalm. Because we have an international gathering, uh, we'll have a psalmist from another community as well as from our own. Toda. Psalm to of Lakol, giving all glory and honor to the creator and maker of heaven and earth, praying that he would accept us as we even fast this day and come before him and ask for forgiveness. To lead us in our songs for this day on this special day of Yom Kippur, Psalm 25, we have our beloved sister, even in Charlotte, North Carolina, Aquivia Eshet Avishadai Ben Levi Ben Yisrael. Please welcome her as she lead us in Psalm 25. Hallelujah. Psalm 12, Rock. Psalm 25. Unto thee, O Yah, do I lift up my soul. O my Elohim, in thee have I trusted. Let me not be ashamed. Let not mine enemies triumph over me. Yea, none that wait for, for thee shall be ashamed. They shall be ashamed that deal treacherously without cause. Show me thy ways, O Yehoah. Teach me thy paths. Guide me in thy truth and teach me. 
for thou art the power of my salvation. For thee do I wait all the day. Remember, O Jehovah, thy compassions and thy mercies, for they have been from of old. Remember not the sins of my youth, nor my transgressions. According to thy mercy, remember thou me, for thy goodness sake, O Jehovah. Good and upright is Jehovah, therefore doth he instruct sinners in the way. He guideth the humble in justice, and he teacheth the humble his way. All the paths of Jehovah are mercy and truth unto such as, his, as keep his covenant and his testimonies. For thy name's sake, O Jehovah, pardon mine iniquity, for it is great. What man is he that feareth Jehovah? Him will he instruct in the way that he should choose. His soul shall abide in prosperity, and his seed shall inherit the land. The counsel of Jehovah is with them that fear him, and his covenant to make them know it. Mine eyes are ever toward Jehovah, for he will bring forth my feet out of the net. Turn thee unto me, and be gracious unto me, for I am solitary and afflicted. The troubles of my heart are enlarged. O bring thou me out of my distresses. See mine affliction and my travail, and forgive all my sins. Consider how many are mine enemies, and the cruel hatred wherewith they hate me. O keep my soul and deliver me. Let me not be ashamed, for I have taken refuge in thee. Let integrity and uprightness preserve me, because I wait for thee. Redeem Yisrael, O Elohim, out of all his troubles. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Should I say something? <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, it's a blessing to be here and be able to fast and have made it to another year and another fast. So while we fast and it's a day of atonement, a day of reflection, so it's also a day of gratitude and giving thanks to the creator because we have, when you really think about it, so much to be thankful for, especially when you think of how many sins are your own. And it's not just to think about the ones that we can see written on paper, the ones that say, love thy neighbor, but you know you have hate in your heart, or thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not murder. But consider and think about everything, the whole earth right now, and how it's in such great turmoil. It's not for no reason, but to think about not just how you treat people that you know, like the Israelites that you know, or just other, let's say, so-called black people. It's other nations. It's his whole earth. It's the land. It's the oceans. It's everything. We have to consider everything. Everything. Because at the end of the day, all belonging to the Most High. All the glory belongs to the Most High. So in this day, when you contemplate and you think about all of the stuff that you have to say, salak lani, slikta, and forgive me for, be thankful. Be thankful. And pray that we make it yet another year. But I also have to say, in all these years, and this has been 40 for myself, Todaya, we have made it far. Don't, don't dismiss the small steps that we've taken. Because I mean, Cohen, he's been here longer than I have. <laughs> but he has even seen so many different things happen over his time and leading, leading us to where we are. And a lot of times we dismiss it because we may not have gotten as far as we think we should have gotten or as far we, as we may have wanted to get at this point. But don't dismiss the small little steps that we've taken because we've gotten far. So in it, still, be thankful. Be thankful for the little steps that, and, the, and the triumphs that we've had so that we can continue to go forward and move forward giving all thanks and honors to the Most High this day. Zoom to. Hallelujah. Toda for even our sister Aquivia. May I continue to bless and be with her. May the Creator accept our fast on this day as we ask, have our beloved brother, even in a community here in Guyana, lead us in Psalm 
130. That's our brother, even Ak Dawood. He will lead us in Psalm 130 on this day. Praise Yehovah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom, Laka. Sum Tov. Sum Tov, Laka. A song of ascents. Out of the depths have I called thee, O Jehovah. Adonai, hearken unto my voice. Let thine ear be attentive to my voice, to the voice of my supplications. If thou, Jehovah, shouldest mark iniquities, O Jehovah, who could stand? For with thee there is forgiveness, that thou mayest be feared. I wait for Jehovah, my soul doth wait, and in his word do I hope. My soul waiteth for Jehovah more than watchmen for the morning. Yea, more than watchmen for the morning. O Israel, hope in Jehovah, for with Jehovah there is mercy, and with him is plenteous redemption, and he will redeem Israel from all his iniquities. Hallelujah. Giving the Creator all praises, glory, honor, and uh, praises again for us, for the gathering that we have here. I pray that He would hear our cries, even as we represent ourselves before Him, as we represent our families before Him and as we represent the earth before him. I pray that he would hear us and forgive us and heal us. I pray that he would forgive us for the wrongdoings that our ancestors did, that we did in the past, and that he would give us the strength that as we move forward, we would not repeat those sins and also that we would strive to get rid of what um what persons would call our darling sins sins that we overlook at times sins that we don't uh that may not register to us that we're transgressing and i pray that you would be with us throughout this fast be with the yellow dean be with every brother and sister even as we meditate and ponder upon our actions and the sins we may have committed as we seek to atone and make it right with the creator hallelujah hallelujah we give thanks to the creator and make of heaven and earth for those two psalmists and praying that Yah will continue to be with them, the families they represent. May we all do deep introspection on this night and plead before the Creator and cry unto Him. One thing we know on days like Yom Kippur that, and we should all accept the fact that none of us is perfect. From the elders in our midst to the king to the priest, we all got to come to the Creator and beg for forgiveness. Our prayer is that Yehoah will hear our cry as we plead unto him to forgive us for all the sins we would have, we would have committed. At this time, I would like to ask you to welcome with me even our beloved Cohen, Cohen Eliel, who will sing the song, one of his songs that glorify Yah, plead for forgiveness on this day. May Yah hear us all. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. May the creator and maker of heaven and earth remember us on this day of atonement, Yom Kippur. And may he pardon our transgressions 
And may he hear and even accept the words of this song as we all, in our own way, plea and pray that the Creator pardon our transgressions. Oh, Father, please hear my plea. Answer my prayers when I call. I cry unto my Maker. I call upon my Savior. Yes, I have lied and I have stole. This day I fast, I afflict my soul. I pray to thee for forgiveness. And I know Yah only is sinless. And he is, he is also merciful. And always, and always wonderful. Almighty King, to you I sing. Yes, you have been and always will be the power of this universe. The only one to remove a curse. I pray to thee all day and night. Trying so hard to live upright, consider me not unworthy. Please remove my sins from upon me. I'm wrong, I'm wrong, and I confess this pain. I feel my life's a mess. Y'all, please, I cry to you, I sing. Save me, save me, my living King. Creator, time and time and time again, morning, noon, and night I sin. How can I remain alive? It seems so hard for me to survive. Father, yeah, to you I pray. Answer all my prayers this day. Creator, it's hard for me to face my fears. No one in my life even cares. Wicked temptations always here. All around me and so near. Who can I turn to when and how? Only all can save me now. I turn to you, oh yeah, my love, my holy king on high above. I offer up to you my praise. From this day on, I'll change my ways. With these few words to you, I plead. Will ya please forgive me? Creator, Jehovah, you are my help and all, oh ya. Without you, I will follow ya. My shield, my king, my everything. My power, my father, my savior, my guide, my strength, my spirit above. Oh, yah, my king, it's you I love. I know thy mercy never ends. Oh, yah, forgive me. For my sin. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Creator, we pray, would forgive us all for the sins we would have committed. At this time, I would like to ask you to welcome with me our Kohen, Kohen Mikael Ben Lewi Ben Yisrael, who will give us some comments on this Yom Kippur. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
like you to remain standing. Uh, I've not done this for a very long time. We did not raise the ark, and so we want to do it at this time. Hallelujah. Kuma Yahoa, Yafu Su Oiveka, Uyanu Su Mis Aneka Mipaneka, Kuma Yahoa, Uyafu Su Oiveka, Uyanu Su Mis Aneka Mipaneka, Kuma Yahoa, Uyafu Su Oiveka, Uyanu Su Mis Aneka Mipaneka. Hallelujah! 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 Yah Kai, Yah Kai, Yah Kai. Amen. Sila, Shivu, Bhavakusha. There's so many things that I had to remember to be here before you this evening. Simple thing like Markwell that I carry all the time when I'm doing my job, various ones, but I had to remember that. And so many other things, as far as the core names, dress and wear, we've not suited up in our robes in the temple for years now. Routine is so important in everyone's lives. When you go to school from a child, you start out learning routines. And so when they're broken, the better you have acquired the routine, the easier it is to return to it. Just think about it if we remember the law that we once knew and we forgot, but now we're remembering it again, maybe we can get back to the routine in this redemptive process that we are going through. I want to think first, because I'd like to share a few thoughts with you about kindness and mercy. The creator who is the most high and the most powerful energy in the universe, he's energy, a spirit of energy that is eternal. He's also a power that is a jealous power and a power of vengeance. The reason why I'm so grateful and thankful because there are people that I heard about, some of them related to you in this room, that they were numerous times very ill or at the point of death and they're still here on this earth right now in our families. And I can't take that for granted. When people you know about, you care about, you love, not only in your family, but like Coke Quivia said, that they're people you know, friends, that y'all spared them or healed them. And you know, tonight, when you think that they're still here. And many times, I know people, we thought they were gonna leave, they were sick, they had an operation, they had this, that, and the other. And people who were well died before they did. You just gotta just realize that those who are alive, <laughs> taking another breath, <laughs> such a blessing and a fortunate thing to be able to breathe. Seems like a simple thing but it could end in, in a second. And I just think about all the seasons when my teacher, Cohen Levy, said that a lot of bad things happen during the holy season. You can see the hand of Yah. And I just want us to think about what we were spared of. And sometimes pictures and words are more than the spoken word. So Spencer, just let us see what happened over the course of just this season. And we know things that happened before. We survived COVID-19, a lot of people died. Some people got very sick. Some of us never even got it. Everybody should be thankful if you didn't die or if you recovered, 
he say, hallelujah, todayana, that he spared me. Don't take it for granted. And so again, a lot of things happen when I see the news. Today, just today, in Fort Lauderdale, one of the last pieces of news I heard, because the news shows you the hand of the creator on the earth, what's happening, what he's doing. And a lot of people have mental illness. It's real prevalent. There may be people in this room that are going through deep mental, mental anguish and heavy weight on your mind. And I know it, I can feel it in the earth. And this young man in a high school in Fort Lauderdale jumped off the roof to his death. People are doing suicide like, you know, it's like taking lunch. Just don't have that hope that I hope every one of you have, whether you're here or online. You got to have faith to survive everything that's happening in the earth. You got to have the strength to trust in the most high to know that he can make a change in the situation. Let's think about some of these things that have happened in the world and we were spared. Maureen might need to go out briefly. A, little bit. a treacherous night ahead for Florida as darkness begins to fall and Hurricane Ian continues its catastrophic rampage. The Category 4 storm moving at an excruciatingly slow pace. Only 8 miles per hour forward progress. Not much faster than a person going for a jog. More than 1 million Floridians have no power right now. Hurricane Ian made landfall tied as the fifth most powerful storm ever to hit the United States. A category four hurricane, maximum sustained winds 150 miles an hour, just shy of a cat five. The center of the storm struck Cayocosta, a barrier island west of Fort Myers and Cape Coral in Lee County. And this is Fort Myers Beach, as a barrage of wind and water slammed the city. Forecasters had warned that the storm surge would be unsurvivable, up to 18 feet in some spots. A short time ago, what Lee if County that Atlantic Ocean people were came over that seawall and did this in Georgetown? Where would we be? I just thank y'all for the mercy that he just continues to show this country of Guyana. One one help, but they were stranded in high water, but they had to hold back their rescue teams but con conditions are still too dangerous. To give you an idea of how ferocious the winds there were, look at this. Englewood Beach, right by the eye wall of the hurricane, shortly before it made landfall. This webcam did not last long after this moment. It they froze and got knocked power. offline. Just look at the power of the creator. We live now from Venice, Florida, for more on the recovery efforts there. I, it's been a week since this storm made landfall now, and many are still without power. Some parts are still underwater. What are you seeing there in Venice? Well, right now we're being told that Florida Power and Light has restored close to 95% of power to the dead. affected areas. There may be still some here and there that don't have power, but that's alive. more of an internal electro electronic Mercy's issue. Now, in terms of the extra federal uh, assistance... Yeah, it is your life that we're living in those things. Some of them are online, and they were on Yom Teruah having the service, and they were not affected by that storm. We can turn on the lights. All of us have seen this or some of this footage, but we have to just think about none of that happened to us in Thailand. Thailand, a gunman killed 36 people in a school nursery today. Today. Flipped out, he was a former policeman. Said he had so many personal problems that he just 
went off. And after he killed 36 people in the nursery school, he went home, killed his whole family, and then killed himself. And again, that's what's happening to people around the world. And it's happening because there's a lot of sin everywhere. And the creator's showing humanity that his power, his anger, his destruction and death is talking to humanity, but people are not listening. They're not even taking that into consideration. Earthquakes, volcanoes increasing in magnitude, but people are still doing evil. You are so important. You may not even think about it or realize it. It may be some Israelites that are righteous that's in this country and all around the world that's keeping the destruction from upon many, many others. People like you that pray Muslims that pray and try to do the right thing. Christians even probably, some of them may be more righteous than us that know the law. And they might be doing the right thing, but they just don't know the creator. Many of us were there and he brought us to know it. Why you think he can't bring them and will not do it? Open up your mind. In Nigeria, where Israelites are, millions of them, they got problems, Boko Haram, fighting against the government, confused and teaming up with Al-Qaeda and killing their own people, kidnapping the girls in school. Man, it's still happening. They're having a petroleum crisis now. You don't know where that's going to go. I just heard the news today and yesterday, Venezuela is making another claim on Guyana again not a blade of grass, but I hope you all will be with us that it never happened. Since I came to this country, they've been doing that claim <laughs> and it not, never happened, but who knows what the future holds for us. That's why I pray and feel this Yom Kippur is so important because I just feel something bad is about to happen, real bad that we never ever thought about before. I'll give you some reasons why. What does a Trump comeback look like in your mind? He's saying he's coming back. You should have heard them people shout. He said, would you all like me to come back? You know what they did. <laughs> I don't have to tell you what they said. If he gets back in there, if he don't get back in there, <laughs> we still got troubles. Somalia, man, I saw them babies. They even say things like, this footage may be hard to, to watch. Is it hard to watch? Them little babies, you could see their ribs, their bones, the skull of their head, it hurts. But it's not your baby and my babies. That's why I'm thankful, but I feel sorry for them too. But I'm thankful for the mercies and not letting that be my grandchild or your grandchild, son or daughter. That's why we need to try to do better. Maybe we can make Yehoah do something good for humanity and the earth if we get it right. Animal bones spread all over Somalia and the Horn of Africa. The land is dry, unproductive. I look out every day out my window, walk through Guyana, and see this green, beautiful land. Trees that I didn't even plant got coconuts on them. Food everywhere. And then these people in other places are starving and dying. It hurts. Because I feel we're responsible too. If our truth had spread to them, maybe it wouldn't be that way. Most of them are children dying feel for these yellow deen everywhere. I don't care if they're Israelites or not Israelites. It bothers you. Another human being dying of malnutrition and cholera. A brother, Chris Carter, 
shot in a police car in London. There ain't no difference wherever we go. Leave the Caribbean, go to America. Leave the Caribbean, go to Britain. They kill us in Britain. The curse follows us wherever we go. Just sitting in the car. A crime was committed by someone else. He had nothing to do with it. Walked up, shot through the glass. He's black, don't matter. Shoot him in the head. And we can name so many others all over It's happening. And if you look at the footage in Ghana and in all these countries, even in Africa, black people killing black people. It's sad because they just don't have no knowledge. Destroying ourselves for the lack of the right knowledge of how to live. And we have that knowledge and we're not living it the way we should and could. That's what I want you to think about tonight. All that damage in Florida and death there. Iran got unrest, protests. They're fighting. They're fighting also in Iran. I don't know what's gonna happen there. That'll be another clash. America's in everybody's business. In Ukraine and man, Mexico drug cartels. <laughs> They're doing their business. They got candy. Opioid pills now that Halloween is coming. They're going to be dropping that stuff in the babies' bags, man. This thing is getting bad. It's unimaginable. The raft of Yah is bringing on this earth. Have you seen how desperate people try to build anything to leave Cuba or Haiti and go in the Atlantic Ocean trying to hope they could paddle to get to Florida? Seven of them died today. It's over hundreds of them dying trying to get out of Haiti. That chaos in there. And boy, people say Guyana's bad. I hope it never get like Haiti, that's for sure. That's real bad. In Cuba, clashes there. Indonesia, football game. <laughs> people went to a football game and you know, some people are just crazy about football. And this team, after the game, all the fans rushed out in the field. Not like the cricket I saw here, people had sense. Cause some people just don't have sense. They went all running out onto the field and the police, like they are everywhere, don't have no love for humanity. Don't treat people like they're animals with that gun and stuff. Shot tear gas on them and they started stampeding and, get, and the gates were locked. Children stamped, tranced stampeded and died. Women who couldn't get out. Could it be your mother, your grandmother, your aunt, your sister, your cousin. Mercy, we here sitting here and we don't have that. We just here sitting, many of us thinking about, I, I'm thirsty. I'm getting hungry now. And there's people who don't even have food. Now put your mind in the bright place tonight to be able to go before the creator with the right kind of mind. Last but not least, my greatest fear. And Mensa, when he woke, rode up to my house yesterday, he said, looks like Russia and the United States could be in a nuclear war. I've been saying that for the longest. You don't know how close we are. I wouldn't be surprised if the holy season don't even end before they drop it. That's how close we are and how they're talking. And Putin is like a dog in a corner. And he's desperate to do anything. And everybody's got their nukes pointed at one another. What are we gonna do in a nuclear war situation? We are in the hands of the Most High. That's all you could do. Because you don't have nothing to shoot back. You don't have nothing to block the wind. He controls the wind. So you got to hope that he favors us enough. And that this Yom Kippur atonement that we're making will help his mercies to continue to follow and be with us. We don't know what's going to happen. That's one thing is certain about. Nobody knows the uncertain. That's certain. 
It's just more and more we got to trust in the most high. We got to do what's right to be able to have the strength to trust in him. There are people that so far they're trying to gather and I hope they do understand with that beautiful song that Cohen Eliel just sang. See, when I listen to any song, the drumming might sound nice. I like it. I get a little beat. The music might sound, but the lyrics to that song is what's so powerful. If you listen to that song in those words, it's just a, such a clear, clear thought that one should be having tonight. We wrong. We did wrong against your whole Forgive me, my king, my creator, using the right terminology, because that's the thing when you come to this understanding. You can't be using the wrong terminology, the terminology in church. The whole Hebrew gives you another line of thinking and how to express your thoughts in prayer. You know you don't end that prayer in no way, but in the name of the Holy One of Israel, the Almighty, Jehovah's Zevod, the power of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. That's what you got to learn because one of our greatest abominations is that calling on them false gods, going into that church, bowing down, doing all that stuff, celebrating so-called God's birthday. He's eternal. How do, he has no beginning, no end, so how does he get a birthday? How many candles should go on that cake? Eternal. Like I said, just another thinking when you come into truth. Truth. Set your mind free. And they have to know what we know. And we have to know what we know even better. Keep learning. Keep growing. One of the things we want them to know is about a few verses in the book of Leviticus. Because that's what took place before we got online at eight o'clock, we attempted to follow a law. And in the 16th chapter, we'd like to look at verse 16 and 17. Just read those two verses. We'll read a few more to give them an understanding of this day. This chapter will be dealt with in its entirety tomorrow. He in Hebrew and in Angali. Read that for 16 and 17 verses of that chapter two. And he shall make atonement for the holy place because of the uncleannesses of the children of Israel and because of their transgressions, even all their sins. And so shall he do for a tent of meeting that dwelleth with them in the midst of their uncleannesses. And there shall be no man in the tent of meeting when he goeth in to make atonement in the holy place until he come out and have made atonement for himself and for his household and for all the assembly of Israel. And I did that again tonight, as I've done. I haven't done it in a number of years because of that play. But on my way here, I just wanted to pray, starting with myself. That's why it was so different for this evening's prayer. And I thought about, what did people do in this building that maybe Yehoah took us out the building? Did we violate the Shabbat in here? Did we do something when no one was around that was unseemly that he said, let me shut down my place of worship? Were we doing stuff in our homes that we came to his house and he didn't see any change and he said, they let him just go about their business go home and think about it? Or is it because some people, they didn't miss the well until the water ran dry and when you couldn't come, then you wanted to come. But when you had the opportunity, you strolled out here at your own pace anytime you felt like it. And you always said, okay, that's how you're gonna treat me, my house, and treat the servants that worked so hard to be before you. It could be anywhere in the world, just think about it. Maybe we did something wrong that Allowed. And my mother used to say, you know, sometimes just even if you didn't or don't feel that you was wrong, just consider that you might be in any situation with a person. 
Don't always think it's somebody else and not you. So it's very important to know that as you read 24 to 32, let's read that quickly for me. Same chapter, verse 24 to 32, it's a message. So we pray for all the families. I pray for myself, Nashim, for the Kohanim, the Morim, the Mishra, the team, the Yeladim. Pray for everybody is what he said. And he said to pray for the house too, because you had to pray for the temple. Like he called it the tent of meeting. So what did we do in here? In the midst of their uncleanness, as maybe people came in here unclean, got unclean in the temple and had to go out. We still had to pray for it. It was not intentional, but we did things that on this day, he said, pray and ask for forgiveness for everything and everybody. Consider yourself first and your nashi and for everybody, children, grandchildren, nephew, nieces, everybody. That's what our own had to do. And because I was trained to do it, and again, inherited the priesthood that was established by our teacher, Cohen Levy, tempted to do this. Not that I think I'm our own. He taught me, no, you're not our own. I don't even want to be our own. I only want to be Cohen Mikhail. I don't even think about no high priest and that stuff don't matter. I just want to be a servant of Yah and do it right and teach the people correctly, like my teacher taught me and others told you the right thing you have to do it but I don't want to be responsible saying I taught you wrong or you didn't understand and you did it wrong he said break it down so everybody can understand it and that's why he said do it because it gives them an idea of how it was done in ancient days so that's why we do certain things so you can understand in a sense what it was like. We can't do everything, but that's the reason behind the things we do and to show you what a priesthood was like after we had a re teaching priest restored in our midst. It goes on to say, And he shall bathe his flesh in water in a holy place and put on his other vestments and come forth and offer his burnt offering and the burnt offering of the people and make atonement for himself and for the people. And the fat of a sin offering shall he make smoke upon the altar. And he that lets it go to God for Azazel shall wash his flesh, shall wash his clothes, and bathe his flesh in water. And afterward he may come into the camp. And the bullock of a sin offering, and the goat of a sin offering, whose blood was brought in to make a taunt in the holy place, shall be carried forth without the camp. And they shall burn in the fire their skins, and their flesh, and their dung. And he that buried them shall wash his clothes and bathe his flesh in water. And afterward, he may come into the camp. And we'll break all of that down tomorrow. It's merely to say that our sins symbolically were transferred onto this goat that was led into the wilderness, a place never to return. But this is the part that I want those who don't know it, because nobody died for your sins. And nobody can die for your sins. That's why you have Yom Kippur. You're remorseful, sorrowful, and asking forgiveness for yourself. It's no sense. It doesn't make sense. It's intelligent to know if you did the wrong, you're the one who have to say, I'm sorry. Nobody's going to do that. You can't send a proxy to go and serve your time in jail. My brother said he'll do the time for me. I said, no, your brother ain't committing no crime. You go in the jail. That's what we have to have. It's simple. It's common sense. And so let us know what Yehovah said so they can know that he said he'll forgive us if we repent and afflict ourselves today. It says. 29. And it shall be as such it forever unto you. In the seventh month, on the tenth day of the month, he shall afflict your souls. And he shall do no manner of work. The homeborn or the stranger that sojourneth among you. You can't go to work. It may be hard. Brother called me up from Barbados yesterday. He said, Cohen, I got a problem. He said, I supposed to perform and I didn't know that it was on Yom Kippur and they're calling me up to go to work tonight and I may not be able to make it to the temple. 
I said, Hakeem, you can't do that. You can't just not go because they told you to go to work. So I said, here's what you could. He said, I called somebody up and they're gonna call me in a little while to tell me they may be able to take my place. So I said, look, I'm gonna tell you what you do. Call in sick just before you have to go to work because it's better to turn them down than to turn down the creator. Just call in and tell say, don't you even make the call. Have somebody make say he's too sick, he can't come to make it. See, when, they, when you don't go to work, the job is gonna go on anyway. If you take off from work and if you get sick, guess what's gonna happen? You're really sick, they're gonna get somebody to take your place. So that's how we gotta treat it. Like, no, the creator is more important. I only getting this chance once in a year and I'm not blowing it. <laughs> and he, he worked it out. Sometimes they just need a little advice, a little cover. Then you say, well, Cohen, you told him to tell a lie. There's a time and a place for everything. If you're doing it for the right reason to comply with the law, the creator's going, you have to understand. He's, a, he's an understanding. Creator's going to look at another. That's your test to see what you're going to do. Are you going to just give in or are you going to try to do the right thing? It matters. It matters. It goes on to say, for on this day shall atonement be made for you, to cleanse you. From all your sins shall he be clean before Jehovah. It is a Shabbat of psalm rest unto you, and he shall afflict your souls. It is a statute for... And they tried and they got it because you got to try. You got to make the effort to do it. And the people against us, that's all why he's testing you to see, well, who's really going to try? Who's going to do it? Who's going to go and put me first before your job? Sometimes when I came in, my mother and my family were so upset when I didn't do Christmas with them. I didn't think nothing about that. This is the truth now. This is Yah. And I know it. They don't. If I didn't do it, they might have never, ever got the chance to do it. Because my mother stopped doing Christmas too. My father, siblings, everybody. But they didn't understand when I wasn't doing it. They said, like, he don't want to buy people gifts. That's why he's going to the temple. Some of your family think you're stingy. You can't think about that. You know the truth. Just stand up and live it, and then you might be able to save your family. If you give in, then they may never get a chance because they say, I knew he wasn't serious anyway. Now he's back doing Christmas. He doesn't. No, you got to be steadfast, consistent, and they see you not changing, and you're changing for the better. Your personality's changing, how you deal with them and people. That's what makes them change and come into the way of life. It ends out and says, You have a right. And the priest? who shall be anointed and who shall be consecrated to be priest in his father's stead, shall make the atonement. I shall put on linen garments, even the holy garments. And he shall make atonement for the most holy place. And he shall make atonement for the tent of meeting and for the altar. And he shall make atonement for priests and for all the people of the assembly. This lets you know that there's a protocol in the nation of Israel. Because he tells you who is the person that does this and who's the next person that comes in. That's something that Cohen used to always use that word, protocol. We got to learn protocol. This is not just a mob or a wild thing. It's got order. 
and you got to follow the order of instructions of the protocol. We can't break it. That's law as to who's to do this. It goes on and says, And this shall be an everlasting statute unto you to make atonement for the children of Israel because of all their sins once in a year. And he did as Yehovah commanded Moses. And we should do as Yehovah commanded Moses. Another chapter that I feel they should know that we all know, because what I like about this way of life, and a lot of them have, verse, have verbally stated it, Israelites, and that is that the truth that we live by is verifiable. When we say we keep in this day because it's in the law, it's in the Torah, we don't say it's in there somewhere, but I can't find it. No, we know how to find it. If we study and repeat the study of the Torah, you become one who can teach and show where it's at. In Leviticus, the 23rd chapter. Take it from the 24th verse, Rebecca. We started where Yivarek is going to begin reading. 23rd verse, you can start there, that we had the first day of this month, seventh day, seventh month. And on the first day, we blew the horn. He's going to do that. Then in this verse that he's going to get to, it's going to tell you on the 10th day. When I was coming here tonight, like I've been doing for a couple of months, I've been watching every phase of the moon. And tonight, if you look out there, that's a 10th day moon. And if you look in five more days, that moon's going to be totally full. That's what another thing you should be able to tell the date. That's how you know you're on the right day. Because you see that first slither, the crescent, you know, okay, this is day one, I got it. Now you just keep watching that moon and counting. It's filling up at seven days. It's going to have a certain shape and size of the crescent. And now you look out there, it's more than halfway. It's getting ready to be 50. It's going to be a full moon. By the time we get to Con Sukkot, watch it. Just watch the moon. You'll see we're on time. It goes on and it says, And Jehovah spoke unto Moshe, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, In the seventh month, in the first day of the month, shall be a solemn rest unto you, a memorial proclaimed with the blast of horns, a holy convocation. And he shall do no manner of servile work, and he shall bring an offering made by fire unto Jehovah. And Jehovah spoke unto Moshe, saying, How be it on the tenth day of this month, seventh month, is a day of atonement. There shall be a holy convocation unto you, and ye shall afflict your souls, and ye shall bring an offering made by fire unto Jehovah. And ye shall do no manner of work in that same day. For it is a day of atonement, to make atonement for you before Jehovah your power. For whatsoever soul it be, that shall not be afflicted in that same day, he shall be cut off from his people. And whatsoever soul it be, that doeth any manner of work in that same day, that soul will I destroy from among his people. He shall do no manner of work. It is a statute forever throughout your generations in all your dwellings. It shall be unto you a Shabbat of solemn rest, and he shall afflict your souls in the ninth day of this month at even. From even unto even shall he keep your Shabbat. And all of the messages today will be precepts that speak to that idea of afflicting our souls through a fast. The real affliction is your mind being afflicted and sorrowful for the things that you've done against the creator, past and present. And having a mindset that you're not going to do it in the future because that goes along with it. If you're going to do the same thing over again, the fast is not properly being kept. Now, what are we fasting for? I don't have to speak about it. I can only comment on it. But Yah's prophets told us that what we did. Go to Isaiah 58th chapter. And all of those online that never kept this, one of the questions they asked me is, Cohen, can you give us the precepts? In the Bible, that's going to be the ones for the soon. Soon really is the passive verb, soon. It means 
you're fasting right now. That's what it means when you say soon told. I'm in the fast. I'm doing it, is what we're doing. And so they wanted to know the precepts. And I said, well, on the night and the day, you're going to hear people giving precepts. You write them down. I'll give you others later. But all of our holy days are connected with the precepts that verify how to keep the fast. Let's look at the 58th chapter of Isaiah, verse 1 to 14, you have a record. Go ahead and read it. Listen and see what this is about. Cry aloud, spare not. Lift up thy voice like a horn and declare unto my people their transgression. And to the house of Jacob their sins. That shows you here that the voice of Israelites, prophets, priests, was like a horn. We said that on the day. Here's a precept that verifies. Lift up your voice like a horn. Make it heard, in other words. Make them hear a loud, clear understanding of what they have done. Declare unto my people, tell them their transgressions. And in another psalm, it says, as for our transgressions, we know them. So that's what we're doing tonight. We're acknowledging that, yes, we have done things wrong. And he talks about it. In the third verse, he goes on to say, you can finish out the... Other verse you have erect till death. Yet they seek me daily and delight to know my ways, as a nation that did righteousness and forsook not the ordinance of their power. They ask of me righteous judgments. They delight to draw near. We talk evil. a good talk, he's saying. We act like we want to be righteous. We talk about righteousness, he said, but it just don't come out like that. We have a delight to do the right thing. I believe more. All of us want to do what's right. But there's a problem when we get tested. When you get in the middle of that situation that you have to figure it out and you have to do the right thing. That's when the problem occurs. We get weak. We don't follow through with our program. He tells us about how you're supposed to fast. Those people, like tonight, some of us will be staying here. Some people in their homes. Right now, probably a lot of them are listening or maybe they hear what's going on. But when this is all over, well, they have the discipline to not talk their business. Well, you have the discipline to say, I got to remember this. That's why I'm going to go in my corner home where I could be by myself get my thoughts and my prayers before the creator because I like, that's what I loved about this time we had. I didn't have this in years and years to be able to spend a Shabbat all day, me and your whole. You may not know, but I go through all the prayers every day with them, every Shabbat, <laughs> every one of them. Read day, proverb, everything in the Siddur, just like it's me and him, and it's just be such a beautiful time. I haven't done that in over 50 years. You got to understand what it feels like. But my position, it's a time and a place for everything. Everything changes, but your whole. You got to learn how to adjust to changes and don't let it throw you off. You just got to make a shift. How do you fast? Here's what your whole said in Isaiah's words Wherefore have we fasted, and thou seest not? Wherefore have we afflicted our soul, and thou takest no knowledge? Behold, in the day of your fast, he pursue your business, and exact all your labors. Behold, he fasts with strife and contention, and to smite with the fists of wickedness. He fasts not this day, cause to make your voice to be heard on high. Is such a fast that I have chosen? The day for a man to afflict his soul? Or a woman? Is it to bow down his head as a bulrush and to spread sackcloth and ashes under him? Is this a show? That's why we came out here. So, oh, I, I'm at, I was at the temple on, on, on Yom Kippur. He says, are oh, you out here because you asking the creator to, to do something to somebody that did something to you? You fast for strife. <laughs> you saying, oh, you know I was right and you know how they've been treating me. Please show them your wrath. 
He said, no, that ain't, that ain't why you're supposed to be out here. He said, you out here, and when soon as it's over, you're going to start talking about your business, what you did or what you want to do or, or what you plan to do. He said, Yo, man, I told you to take off work so you could put your mind on what you're supposed to be doing and asking for forgiveness and being sorrowful. And here it is, you talking about, oh, did you make that dress? How your dress looks, did you make that or did, 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 did you buy it? He don't want you talking about that stuff tonight. He wants you to do this sincerely. He don't want you holding your Isha's hand and y'all y'all get in the corner and baby we and then y'all gonna be arguing anyway in another couple of days anyway. So you better might as well just take some time to get off and do your thing and get in your own spirit before your creator. That's what he's saying you should do. Every soul come before me for yourself. Don't have to put on no sack clothes, cloth. You don't have to dress up. Just come from in here and be real with me, Yah is saying. He goes on to say, Will thou call this a fast and an acceptable day to Yehovah? That you do it the way he described as the wrong way? Now he says, is not this the fast that I've chosen? Is not this the fast that I have chosen? To lose the fetters of wickedness and to undo the bands of yoke and to let and to let the oppressed go free, and that he break every yoke? That's right. In other words, treat people more kind instead of oppressing them. How do you oppress a person? You hard. Sometimes you could be that way to children. Sometimes children could be that way to adults. He's saying, let the yoke, like as though you have a, a chain and a piece around your neck, he said, loose all that stuff or whatever wrong you're doing, wherever your witness, let it go and come back to me. Because that's what this return atonement is about. We all went off the path, he said. Come back and get on the path tonight. Return. Because that's what Teshuvah, Shav, I'll break it down more tomorrow. It's a return back to Yah in your ways, in your thinking, in your goodness. It goes on to say in verse 7. Is it not to deal thy bread to the hungry, and that thou bring the poor that are cast out to thy house? When thou seest the naked, that thou cover him, and that thou hide not thyself from thine own flesh? He said, when you see your people, and you see the people that are suffering and hungry, and children, have a heart to try to help them. Wherever your means can do so, do something to help somebody that's in need of help. He says further, Then shall thy light break forth as the morning, thy healing shall spring forth, as, spring forth speedily, and thy righteousness shall go forth before thee, and the glory of Jehovah shall be thy reward. In other words, I'll be guarding you. I'll watch your back. He said, I'll watch your back, your reward. <laughs> If you just do those things that are good and right and be kind and merciful and helpful to those that need it the most. Verse 9 says, Then shall thou call, and Jehovah will answer. You pray and he's going to answer you then. He said, maybe some of you not getting your prayers answered because I don't like how you do and how you live. He says, Thou shalt cry, and he will say, Here I am. When you're down and you're crying, he'll be your comforter. He says, Did thou take away from the midst of thee that the yoke, the putting forth of the finger, and speaking wickedness. That's what a lot of us do. A lot of people know it's true. Israelites point that finger all the time. You, 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 never me. You always do. That's a word we say all the time. You always do it. You always, you always think you're right. You always do all kind of stuff. If we don't tell that person, which most time we don't do, we tell them somebody else. He, she, he, she, he, she, do say. And we just got to tell somebody. We don't take our cause to Yah. And we don't even realize we're sinning. Slandering each other. That's why. One of the things about being an Israelite, we got to spread out. Like Yah gave us that land. He spread us out. 
we like the cities, but he said, no, I'm going to spread you all out over Israel. Because <laughs> once you get Israelites coming together too much stuff, they say familiarity breeds what? That's what happens with us. We like to socialize too much. Socialization. And that's what he stopped with that. I think he got tired of socializing because he said, seemed like all this socializing is evil socializing. He even said one place, and Isaiah said, he said, I'm tired of your shop toting, your new moons, and all that fastness. He said, just keep it. I cannot adore iniquity with the solemn assembly. He don't want the two together. If you're going to do evil, he said, just go and do it. If you don't want to do the Lord, just go do whatever. But if you say you're going to do the Lord, do it and stop playing around and playing games. That's all he's saying. Come she. And if thou draw, draw all thy soul to the hungry and satisfy the afflicted soul, then shall thy light rise in darkness and thy gloom be as a noonday. He said, man, if you're having trouble, he said, if I see you do some kind stuff to people, and there are people that do it. They're in our midst and they're online too. But this is for if the cap fits, wear it. If the shoe fit, say to the most high, honey, I sham, yeah. I'm guilty with that one. This is, that fits me. I could be better in that area. We all can be better there. So everybody should be saying, hey, I see what Yehoah likes and he delight in. I'm going to try to get better this year in that area, see who I can help. Sometimes it's just your words, calling the person up. Yes, we didn't have a gathering here, but still we can call and I call people, especially the ones who need it. Oh, something happened to brother, so let him get in touch with me. Uh, I'll get him to get me his number so I can reach him. I'm calling him, but I'm not reaching him. Doing it the whole time. Everybody that I could think of, and it's a lot of people, just not here in Ghana, they're all over the world when I'm dealing with it. They're calling because they feel you can give them the words to help them. I'm glad they feel that way. That's one thing about the service of Yah. You ain't no servant if nobody don't want your service. You ain't no real servant. You got to be somebody that they feel, I want to come to them. I'm calling him up. He's, I, I believe he's a good person. He's going to understand. She's going to understand. That's what we have to understand. It doesn't have to be a priest. Anybody can be nice. It says. And Jehovah will guide thee continually. And satisfy thy soul in drought. Make strong thy bones. And thou shalt be like a watered garden. And like a spring of water. Whose waters feel not. Man, everything, you're going to flourish. You're going to be beautiful. You're going to have the best. And you're going to have a good life, is what he said, if you do the right thing. I'll and prosper you, it says. And they that shall be of thee shall build thee old waste places. Thou shalt rise up the foundations of many generations. Thou shalt be called the repairer of the bridge, the restorer of paths to dwell in. You're bringing back people to Yah. That's what I love doing. I mean... You may not know how much I love getting new people to serve you. That's what I really love. When you know it, that's wonderful. Now you should be bringing other people to you. That's what everybody should be at. How many people have you told about the creator, his law, and been able to make an impact and influence to get them to come this way? Imagine if every Israelite taught one, five, ten. Man, this criminal will grow so fast. We got to be able to make an impact on people. You got to be living this a way that you influence people, that your light shines and that people come to you to seek Yah. It says, and this here one, this one, I really hope everybody will think about. This is what he says about us in the Shabbat day. And that's that once a week, the seventh day Shabbat. Every holy day is a rest day, but he's talking about the seventh day Shabbat. Ask yourself, did I violate the Shabbat this year? Did I do it last year? Ask yourself, say you're guilty before. You don't have to tell me. Nobody has to know. This is not about that. It's about you sitting there, hearing this book and reading these words and saying, I'm guilty in this area. Jehovah, forgive me. Help me to do it better this year. Listen to what he says about the Shabbat. 13. If thou turn away thy foot for, because of the Shabbat, 
from pursuing thy business on my holy day. In other words, turn your foot. You was going to work. You turn your foot, say, no, I'm going to the temple. You was going to a game. No, you said, nope, I'm turning my foot. I'm going to the temple. That's what he said. On the Shabbat day, I'm in my bed, devil saying, man, you tired. Don't you go out there today? And you just lay down. Most I said, no, you say, I'm, I'm going to the temple. I, I, I got to get up. I'm going to get my strength together, but I'm going to. That's what he's saying. Because you could, everybody feel like staying home. But he says, if you turn away, from the direction you want to go in and do the stuff you want to do or what you're thinking about, even pursuing your business on my Shabbat day, he says further. And call a Shabbat a, de a delight and the Holy One of Yehovah honor him. In other words, you get a different thought about what you want to do and you say, no, Yehovah is great. I got to go out there and say, Todah Yah, for bringing me and my family to another end of a week. And I'm thankful that he was good to me. I was praying that my father, my mother, I had family that was sick. I got to go out and pray for them. And you say, I love the Shabbat day. Can't get it, wait to get out there to say, Zayed ha Shabbat. Because a lot of people come to the temple, they never even heard Zayed ha Shabbat. They get out there so late that we don't sing Zay had a Shabbat hours ago. But he said, if you delight it like that, you getting ready, you making preparation, because y'all don't realize it. He says, I'm watching y'all every day. Y'all don't even realize it when you're going about your, he said, I'm the one who's taking you safely everywhere you go. I'm watching y'all all the time. And then I just took one day out of seven and asked you to come out and say, Todah Yehoah, I thank you for my life, for the food, the clothing, the shelter, for my children and for the protection, for healing me when I was sick and all the things you've done for me all my life. I got to take this time and come and thank you for it. That's all he's asking. It ain't much. And we won't give it to him. We come out here, we got our cell phones and we're calling up everybody all over the world. And he's saying, if I don't want you to go to work, I don't, I'm trying to get you to understand, I want your attention. Don't you understand that? I just want your attention to show me. You know how it is when somebody says, here, take this. They ain't even looking at you. Thank you. You ain't even paying attention. That's what he's talking about. Look at me and say, thank me, y'all, uh, in my house. That's all he's asking. Now, you know we're guilty. Somebody in Israel is guilty. You know who you are. That's what Yah is talking about on Yom Kippur. Don't play games with me. You heard Ariel said that? No. Everybody listen on Yom Teruah. The horn is still being blown. He said, the Mosai is not to be played with. Don't take Yehoah for granted, is what the man said. Too many of us do just that. We take them for granted. It says. And shall honor it, not doing thy wanted ways, nor pursuing thy business, nor speaking thereof. That's where we get in trouble at. Lack of discipline in the mouth. We got to come up and somebody, nobody won't even say, that's not Shabbat conversation. Because when you say that, they start rolling their eyes at you. Yeah, who are you? And he wants you to come out and hearken. We really want to come out. We want to sing, play the drums, and that's it. When the speaker's speaking, got to go to the bathroom. A lot of us sit outside in the yard. I saw you. Be honest now. You come to the house of yard, and you go in the yard and sit out. But when you go to cricket, you sit and watch the cricket match every hit, every catch, every everything. Yehoah know the difference. We claim him for granted. He's not going to take it. 
People are going to get hurt bad if we don't change. And we know it's true. And he said, if you do this, here's what I'll do for you. Then shall thou delight thyself in your hope. I'll help you grow to love me even more. I'll put it in your heart. Just try. And I will make thee to ride upon the high places of the earth. I'll let you do things that a nigger and a poor person in all boys town and Harlem and Brownsville and the ghettos of this world would never imagine they'd get to do. I'll have you travel around this world and see things that you know. You wonder how you was able to do it. Where'd you get the money to get on that flight that they said, I'll do things for you that you never would imagine. In your mouth to speak it and live it. But you won't speak my word, you speak your words on my holy day. He says, 14th verse and ended up. And I will feed thee with the heritage of Yahweh, thy father. For the mouth of Yahweh has spoken it. I have two more precepts, because a lot of people, if I know Israelites, they're already getting sleepy and tired of hearing me. Some of you hungry. Going, I haven't heard you in a long time, but that's what Israel is. We are mixed bag. It's not one thing size fits all. Different personalities, different characters, different ages, different root coat. That's why he chose us. We're peculiar. He don't want nothing ordinary. He's peculiar. He had to choose a people that's peculiar too. But we got to listen and obey the instructions. And he has caused you to ride the high places, he said, of this earth. And here is what he'll give you that last line. You ever read? And I will feed thee with the heritage of Yaakov thy father. I'll give you that land of Israel again. I'll give you everything that I preached I restore the king, the monarch. I'll give you everything that I promised to give in that heritage that's yours. For it. Not Isaiah said it. He said, for the mouth of Jehovah, he spoke these words. One other chapter, just some of it. Give a read 59 as fast as you can, but I hope they don't roll over those things that is talking about us, tells us things that we've done. A cocktail, sinners, man. All of us. Our wound. We did iniquities. Pesha, we transgress all kinds of ways. Inappropriate sex, inappropriate relationships, not according to the law and following that path. We got Chicago errors and mistakes that we are guilty of. We all are awelim, we're wrong in our doings. Rashaim, wicked. I remember that precept. His diku has a dik. We hear a shu harasha. Justify the wicked, the righteous, and condemn the wicked. That's what he does. He knows all of us and where we're guilty, where we're not guilty, where we're wrong. Evil, ra'a. Shekwira, liars. Deceitful people speak falsehoods. Quashim orfim, hard necks, won't go the way I tell you to go. I like the one they use for tail bearing gossip. Bequalut, this word cold, that's what it is, in the voice of Rosh. In other words, you at the head of talking about people. You're the leader when it comes to talking about people and spreading gossip. That's why I like staying by myself. <laughs> yeah, be quiet. Let them do all that stuff. Yeah, I'm going to be more and more aloof. When you get older, you ain't for all that running around anyway. 
you done partied enough for a lifetime. At least I have. I don't have to never party again. I had a time when I partied, I'm telling you, with big people. Yeah. All them pros, man, went to their parties. I remember all that. Up in Manhattan, them clubs, disco dancing. Yeah, did all that stuff. When you get older, you don't feel like that disco dancing no more. That's what happens in life. It changes. You settle down. I was telling some of them young men over there. I remember when they was in their 20s. They was out there on that basketball court every day. Now they get home and they back with that leg say, no, uh, I'll see you next week, brother. Next Sunday we'll be praying. <laughs> I went there, I've been there, did that. I know what happens. And you're going to get older too. And it comes fast too. Right? You think it's a long time. <laughs> You'll be there before. My uncle used to say something. With, it wasn't funny, but it just always made me think. He's no longer alive. And you come and he said, how old are you? He said, I'm 20. He said, you're going to pass me soon. <laughs> now, you can not never pass nobody that's older than you. But you catching up. You ain't catching up exactly, but the place where they was at, you getting that spot now. Some people don't even get to that spot. They die. So they never get to the, all these things that that person who lives, because that's what this is about, living, trying to stay alive. And everybody gets judged differently. I will bless who I will bless. I'll curse who I'll curse. He do what he want to do. Saul did something, took him out. David did it. Made him the king forever. David did not go to the witch of Endor. It's about love for your home. Really understanding it. Shava. Shavuat. Shao. Shavuat. Shava with the iron on it. Not seven, but an oath when they made that well, the well of swearing. That's why people got to not have false swearing, vain promises that you're not going to keep. Even a word that is not necessarily true, and you shouldn't say it. A word like, I love you. A lot of people say that, and they don't even know what that word means. And when you say it to a person that you shouldn't be saying it to, you really out of order now. What are you telling her? You didn't even talk to her mother yet or her father. And you're saying, I love you. You better understand protocol. We sin in a lot of ways. Don't respect people's parents. Yeah, you wrong. And your whole one knows you're wrong. Sins that we do, we know we're doing it. Sins that we do that we don't know we're doing it. You ever wreck a few words in 59? Look at how we were, we are, and hope we will not be in the future. First verse 59. You go right through it quickly. Behold, your horse hand is not shortened that it cannot save, neither is ear heavy that it cannot hear. But your iniquities have separated between you and your power. And your sins have hid his face from you, that he will not hear. For your hands are defiled with blood, and your fingers with iniquity. Your lips have spoken lies. Your tongue muttereth wickedness. He ain't talking to the Chinese. He's talking to us. These are the things that we're capable of doing. You saying, well, I'm not that one. You ever act? Neither is his here heavy. He said, I hear everything you all saying. He said, well... Speaking unity like that. Unity is the whole planet got to be unified with Yah. And I can't do it alone. And we can't do it alone. 
It's Yahweh's going to do it. Not by power, not by might, but by my ruach, I'm going to change it up. In my time, I'll hasten it up when I get ready. This is a process. Checking everybody out, seeing this person in this situation, how you going? Oh, he's great there, but let me test you over here now. Give us time to get it together. That's why you want to live. Hopefully you'll be here next year, still trying to get better, trying it again. It says in verse four, none sue it in righteousness and none plead it in truth. They trust in vanity and speak lies. They conceive mischief and bring forth iniquity. Is that you? Do you conceive mischief? Do you keep something going all the time? Can't let a story go? I just got to put my opinion in it. Everybody got an opinion. Sometimes it's just good not to say nothing. I like to tell people, no, I, they keep calling me up from overseas. I had a few calls in the last month. Brother, I don't even want to hear that. Don't call me for that stuff. Something all the way in America that somebody did. I'm in Guyana. I, I, I'm not, I got stuff here I got to deal with. I don't want to hear about that over there. And that's all you calling me to tell me about that? They see, I shut them down. I'm not afraid to tell people, no, I don't want to talk about that. I don't even want to hear it. I'll tell my Nashim that, anybody. You come and start talking about, oh, sister, I don't want to hear that. Nope. I'm trying to shut you down so you don't say the wrong thing out your mouth. See, when you talk too much, that's where you could slip up at. Make your words fewer. It's good. You don't have to be in every conversation. Know everybody's business and have an opinion on it. Most people that's in other people's business leave, don't take care of their own business. Mind your own business. It's a good way to stay out of trouble. Because he says in verse 3, here's what people do. Israelites, this is what y'all do. They hatch what? They hatch basilisk's eggs and weave the spider's web. He that eat it of their eggs diet. And that which is crushed, break it out into a viper. Man, I, I, I can't even say it like that. <laughs> the way I say he said, you're like a snake in the grass. That's what a basket is. He said, you like, you, 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 you cause more snakes to come up. You spreading snakes, poisoning snakes all around the place. about the people that's not in this room on line striving to try to get their lives together. And think of the evil people that we have that you see and hear about in the news and you all know about in Guyana and the things that happen here amongst all the races. You know this is going on in everybody's community. It's not just us. Just think about all the other people that's doing stuff worse than what's on here because they don't know Yehoah. They don't know the Torah, and they don't have integrity, virtue. They don't have things like moral thinking. Most people thinking immorally. Man, it's sickening to see all these people that are women want a wife. Now we got one on the national stage. BG, they call her. Her wife was on the news talking today. You know, that's something strange when I hear a woman say, my husband. And then you look up, it's another woman. My wife, and it's another woman. <laughs> that is so crazy. And I wish I could just, with them men kissing on TV, I just wish that they would just let me get through that TV and just give them a knock in the head to wake them up and say, what are you kissing that man for? Your daughter got to see it. Your grandchild got to see it. And I mean, this world is in such a bad shape. It's, it's sad. All against the creator's rules of life. We're just violating the humanity everywhere. This is a humanity thing. You're going to see him say it. Give a record to it, please. Verse 5. 
Their feet run to evil, and they make haste to shed innocent blood. Their thoughts are thoughts of iniquity. Desolation and destruction are in their paths. All the movie stars and all their big money, they're in such wickedness. We done lost Whitney Houston, a rapper that you all know better than I do. He just died this week. Beautiful lyrics. I listened to his words. But the young people are dying. The rappers are dying. And man, I don't know if you ever seen any of the hip hop stories with their women and the stuff they're going. It's crazy. Hip hop, they call it. <laughs> hip hop. And that world, they just rapping. In Africa now, they got millions of dollars. But if you see that lifestyle, how they living it. Big, big mansions they in. All of that stuff. And they into crazy stuff that you couldn't believe when it comes to wickedness. That money just allows them to be more wicked. I hope we don't let prosperity change us. The way of peace, they know not. And there's no right in their goings. Yeah, Poop, uh, Tupac dead. Biggie Smalls dead over stupidness. Great minds. So many others like them taken off this earth because they didn't have the knowledge that you have in this world. They never got that chance to know you. You doing it for other people who did not get a chance. Please think about it. Tell me shit. They have made them crooked paths. Whosoever goes therein doth not know peace. Nobody even wants you to do the right thing. Therefore, is justice far from us. Neither does righteousness overtake us. We look for light. But behold darkness. For brightness. But we walk in gloom. We grope for the wall like the blind. Yea, as they that have no eyes do we grope. We stumble at noonday in the twilight. We are in dark places like the dead. We all growl like bears. And moan so like doves. We look for right. But there is none. For salvation. But it is far from us. That's what happens. We, we, we all want salvation. It ain't coming. It's far from us because we're not living right. We want right things to happen, but it doesn't happen. We all got big mouths. We argue with each other, raise our temples. But when Jehovah put his hand on us, just like little doves. Because we're not as tough as we think we are. Just got to be a little kinder. Kindness and humility would help Israel and take us a great distance. Read it out, you're right. For our transgressions. For our transgressions are multiplied before thee, and our sins testify against us. We are decreasing them, he says. We keep, we're making them, we're multiplying them. This Yom Kippur, let's try to decrease them if we can live to see next Yom Kippur. For our transgressions are present to us, and as for our iniquities, we know them. Transgressing and denying Jehovah and turning away from following our power, speaking oppression and perverseness, conceiving and uttering from the heart words of falsehood. That's how we supposed to get that affliction. When we hear this, we should think and say, yes, we are guilty. Even if I'm not, someone else in my nation is. And that's why we all are suffering because one individual can't save us. It's got to be, he said, uh, I'll deal with a remnant. All of you, I don't want you, but I got to at least have that remnant. It's prophecy. I can't change it. Says Yah. And justice is turned away backward, and righteousness standeth afar off. For truth hath stumbled in the broad place, and uprightness cannot enter. It's not steadfast truth for my people. He wants us to be straight up with him like we say all the time. And tr truth is lacking. And he that departed from evil, make it himself. Nobody afraid. wants the person that's trying to do right. They condemn you if you're trying to be right. People say things like, you trying to be right. You think you're right all the time. I would like to be. I think all of us should be trying to be right all the time. What should I be doing? Try to be evil sometimes. Everybody's supposed to be striving for that. Why do we attack one another for trying to be right? And that's because the person thinks they're right. You should think you're right or else why are you talking like that? 
You're not supposed to just say I'm right. I, everything I see here in this Tanakh says I'm doing the right thing. Oh, what you said is true. I'm wrong there. I'm sorry. But I'm trying to do right. That's what it's about. It says. And Yehovah saw it and it displeased him that there was no justice. And he saw that there was no man and was astonished that there was no intercessor. Therefore, his own arm brought salvation unto him, and his righteousness is sustained him. And he put on righteousness as a coat of mail, and a helmet of salvation upon his head. And he put on garments of vengeance for clothing, and was clad with zeal as a cloak. And as I said, the Most High is the God of salvation, and he's a power of vengeance. He pays people back for what they do against him. Nobody gets away. According to their deeds, he says. Accordingly, he will repay. Fury to his adversaries, recompense to his enemies. To the islands, he will repay recompense. He don't care who you are, a small continent, a large continent, because an island is just a small piece of land surrounded by water. A continent is a large land surrounded by water. He said, I don't care if you, my adversary, if you're going against my destructions of my word, then I'm going to deal with it. He says in closing out. So shall they fear the name of Jehovah from the west and his glory from the rising of the sun. For distress will come in, will come in like a flood with the breath of the Jehovah drive it. And the Redeemer will come to Zion. And unto them that turn from transgression, transgression in Yaakov, say to Jehovah, Yes. And as for me, Tom this is my covenant with them, saith Jehovah, my spirit that is upon thee, and my words which I have put in thy mouth shall not depart out of thy mouth, nor out of the mouth of thy seed, nor out of the mouth of thy seed seed, saith <laughs> Jehovah, from henceforth and forth. He said, I'm not going to put my songs in your heart. I'm going to put my Torah in your mouth, in the mouth of your seed, in the mouth of your grandchildren. And that's what's happening. Them babies that we have, I just hope y'all keep blessing them and putting that spirit on them to do what sometimes the adults won't do. So we got hope in the next generation. I want to end out with this last precept that's in Hosea, the 14th chapter, verses 2 to 10. Because those who are doing this for the first time gets another affirmation confirmation about this day and how to do it. It's written in our Bible. It's in the Hebrew part of the Bible. We are not Greek people and we don't shouldn't be thinking that we follow Greek instructions. We're back to the Hebraic thought, the Hebraic culture, the Hebrew language, the Hebrew way of life. And in the second verse, speaks to this very idea. Once that city of Samaria, Judah, the southern kingdom, Samaria, the northern kingdom, they were guilty first, but like a holy bar and a holy bama, Judah didn't learn from the northern kingdom's sins and mistakes. Some of us don't learn from other people's sins and mistakes. It would help us all if we saw somebody do wrong and say, no, I'm not going to do that. But in the second verse, again, it shows you why offerings is not required tonight. Creator knows we're in captivity. We don't have them. He was thoughtful enough to leave this on record to let us know, here's what I want you to do while you're in captivity. Return, O Israel, unto Yehovah thy power. For thou was stumbled in thine iniquity. And we're guilty. Take with you words and return unto Yehovah. Say unto him, forgive all iniquity and accept that which is good. So will we render for bullocks the offering of our lips. That's what we're doing. We're just praying sincerely as much and as frequently we can, as we can during the next, these 24 hours, it's just one day. 
I told them online, if you watch the clock, the day's going to go very slow. If you're thinking about food, it's going to be even harder for you. You're supposed to be thinking about what you did, thinking about giving thanks for your life and for the life of the people that you love that your horse kept alive. Maybe he'll give them more time. That's what we're supposed to be doing. Praying for all of our brothers and sisters out there that are less fortunate than we are and that don't know. And our families that are still in idolatry and superstition. Thinking about good things and good thoughts for us and for the world. Because I'm worried about the whole planet. A lot of people are going to die. A lot of them are going to be our people too. It's happening already. It's just going to be more. It goes on to say. Ashur shall not save us. America's not going to save you. We will not ride upon horses. We're not going to have the prosperity of any country that have the best airplanes, whatever have it, tall buildings and all. He said that that's not what it's about. Neither will we call any more the work of our hands, our God. We're going to learn that. Yeah, we're going to think that money's it. Or a ring on the finger for marriage makes everything all right. He says, no, that ain't your healing. That ain't your salvation. For indeed, the fatherless findeth mercy. Because that's what he's talking about. The child that don't have no father, do you care about him? You only care about your own children? Some people could be what they call a foster parent, a adopt a child, or pick up somebody that you could help this child because sometimes the parents can't reach him. It'd be another person another adult that can say your mother's telling you right they listen to you because sometimes as you get to have those children grow up they feel they know just as much as you do they got an answer for everything you tell them that's how it is when they start growing up and so that's why I told you sometimes it takes somebody else to try to reach them because you ain't going to be always to reach your children I love that saying in God is true you make the baby. You have the intimate mating. You do all of that. But you ain't going to control that baby's mind. That child going to do what he want to do. Think like he want to think. And you ain't, you ain't in it. You didn't make him. He don't belong and she don't belong to you. I got to deal with him. I'll take care of that business. You just do your job as a parent. The children right from wrong. They're going to have to figure it out for themselves. Cohen should say every tub got to sit on its own bottom. And that's the thing about understanding. You can't just break down because your children get punished. You got to pray that they learn from it. Sometimes that's what it takes for them to change. My mother used to say, and you know you probably heard this too. You can't hear, but you can feel. You can feel. That's what happens to them. When they start feeling the hand of the creator, they get out on their own. You got it good if you got somebody changing your diaper. You got it wonderful if your meal is cooked and you never even touch one of the things you're eating to prepare it. You are doing great if you got a roof over your head and it ain't, you ain't out there on the street. Never mind what kind of roof you got. You have one. There's people sleeping out in the elements. Yellow Dean better be thankful for them parents that care about you and love you. And you grow up all of a sudden and now you mouth for mouth, word for word. <laughs> You're going to learn the hard way. If you don't learn it, do the words. Because what goes around comes around. See what happens a lot of time. That child that didn't listen your whole give you a child just like you. Now, I heard people say, that's me all over again. Or you say, that's aunt so-and-so, uncle so-and-so, come back. Because, hey, life is deep. It's not a joke. It's not a game. That's what I found out as I started hitting 17, 18, 19. This thing is serious. You could really have some problems that can wear you out. Some troubles that can 
make you want to do something. And that faith of Jehovah and them good words that somebody bring, righteous words, helps that person. So I'm just so thankful that Yah never leaves us. He loves us. He's merciful. And he always trying to give us a chance to change. I hope we don't blow it this year. It ends out and it says, before we close out our service tonight and our thinking. I will heal their backsliding. I will love them freely. For mine anger is turned away from him. I will be as a Jew unto Israel. He shall blossom as a lily and cast forth his roots as Lebanon. His branches shall spread and his beauty shall be as an olive tree and his fragrance as Lebanon. They that dwell under his shadow shall again make corn, make corn to grow and shall blossom as a vine. The scent thereof shall be as a wine of Lebanon. Ephraim shall say, what have I to do any more with idols? As for me, I respond and look on him. I am like a leafy cypress tree. From me is my fruit found. Is thy fruit. Is thy fruit found, Sika. Whoso is wise, let him understand these things. <laughs> Whoso is prudent, let him know them. Teach. For the ways of Yehovah are right. Amen. And the just do walk. That's who walk. Them. But. But the transgressors do stumble therein. This is a righteous way of life. If you do right, you're going to prosper and be blessed. But if you do evil, you're going to stumble. Because that's what happens when you don't walk in the law. The law is right. You got to do it. May your whole bless each and every one of you to understand these words tonight. Any words that you heard from any psalmist or anyone. At this time, I'm going to ask you to stand and we're going to have closing out exercises at this point. And that now brings us to go in shape once again. Bakusha, uh, he will begin the exercises, Let's close us out. I think he's going to sing the Nagun Karata once again. And then we're going to have the closing prayer by one of the Kohanim and the benediction and closing. So call and shade for Vakusha. Can you lead us in the Nagun Karata? And we're going to sing the Shema first, and then we're going to go into the Nagun Karata. Torah for your words. May the Holy One of Israel continue to bless and keep us all is my prayer. Let us sing Amen. together the Shema, and then we'll sing the Nagun Karata to close us out. Shema Yisrael Yahweh Eloheinu Yahweh Eloheinu Yahuwah Echa Baru Shem Kevur Malhuto Le Shamnu Silaklanu Havinu Havinu Silaklanu Silaklanu Irshanu Irshanu Silaklanu Silaklanu Hamas nu Hamas nu Silaklanu Silaklanu Kizav nu Kizav nu Silaklanu Silaklanu Ta'inu 
Atanu bequelu rosh. Atanu bequelu rosh. Lak lanu. Silak lanu. Atanu bequilut. Atanu bequilut. Lak lanu. Silak lanu. Atanu beshuak shah. Atanu beshuak shah. Lak lanu. Silak lanu. Katanu Billy Dad, Katanu Billy Dad, the Lock Lanu, the Lock Lanu, Katanu Bedad, Katanu Bedad, the Lock Lanu, the Lanu. O Yehoah, whereby, whereby shall, shall we call and call before thee and into the bottomless pit? Power of our fathers, cause all our sins to vanish from before thee. Bless our minds and hearts, that we may know and do righteousness for thy name's sake. Hapelanu, mekalanu. Analanu Hoshienu Yahua Yahua Silak 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 lanu, hapir lanu, mekau lanu, ana lanu, oshienu. Yahua, Yahua, Silak, 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 Lanu. Grant us remission. Pardon us, save us, we pray. Yehoah, 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 forgive us. Let us sing once again the Shema and Kornho Dai will end us out with a prayer. Shema Yisrael Yahuwah Yahuwah Eloheinu Yahuwah Echa Ba
Hallelujah. Before thee and thee alone do we humble our spirits, Yahweh. As you hear our silent prayers before thee, Yahweh, answer our petitions. Forgive us, O Heavenly King. Thou who art the creator and maker of heaven and earth. You who knew us from the time we was within our mother's womb. Every sin we've committed, you know it, O Heavenly Father. There is nothing, nothing that we can hide from you. You know us better than we know ourselves, O Heavenly King. We sometimes put on masks to hide our guilt from the face of whom humans. But you know what is within our closet, O Heavenly Father. We ask you, Heavenly Father, to judge us in your mercy, O Heavenly Father. Be merciful to us. We ask you, Heavenly King, to look within our inward parts for the small amount of good that we do. We acknowledge on this Yom Kippur, Yehoah, we are not perfect. We acknowledge before thee, Yehoah, we've lied, we've sinned in so many ways. We acknowledge this day, O Heavenly Father, that we have broken the covenant that we made with thee, O Heavenly King. We are guilty, Yehoah. We are guilty. Many times we fall prey to temptations and our physical desires, O Heavenly King. Not following our spirit to do that which is right and pleasing in thy eyesight. Yahweh, forgive us. For many times we go after our wanton ways, O King. Too numerous to mention. Forgive us, O Heavenly King. Forgive us, Yahweh. Forgive us for the times we violated your sharp toad, O Heavenly King. For the times we did so much wrong to our brother or to our sister. For so many times, O Heavenly King, Yehovah, we hurt each other. Yehovah, help us get it right. Help us repair our relationship with you and with our brother and with our sister. On this Yom Kippur, after being separated from each other for so many years, due to your plague that was on the earth, we thank the Yah for blessing us to once again be able to be in the company of our brothers and our sisters. But Yahweh, we ask thee, as your hand is still on the earth with war and devastation and hunger and strife, that you will save Israel. We thank thee, Yah, for protecting so many of our loved ones who through the last few years, just as we were isolated in our homes and in quarantine, some of our brothers and sisters had strokes, O Heavenly Father. We thank thee, Yah, for preserving their lives. 
So many plagues have affected us in so many ways. So many of our loved ones we have lost, but yet we are here on this Yom Kippur begging for your forgiveness. Yah, forgive us. Forgive our spiritual leaders, wheresoever they may be. Those men and women who stand to represent various communities and who stand up to lead and, and to do the work to ensure that your name is being glorified in whatever country. You know them, not only by their name, but by the very spirit that dwelleth within them. Help us to understand that we do this work, men, women, and children, not for no man's glory, but for your glory and your glory alone. Yehoah, help your saints. Be with to hear the cries of on this Yom Kippur of that man and that woman that's in a country by themselves or in a home by themselves celebrating this Yom Kippur. Remember those that are in the hospitals. I can think of so many, Yehovah, you know them, that are observing this Yom Kippur and are ill. Hear their cries and their petitions. Yehovah, hear the cries and the petitions of those that are in the prison houses, that are incarcerated. Hear their cries. Some of us, our people, have been put in quarantine forcibly, O oh Heavenly Father and may find themselves alone, hear their cries and forgive them and show mercy to Israel. Yehoah, the words that I speak are just simple words and prayers that you put in my heart, O Heavenly Father, to say this day. But I plead unto thee, Allow Israel to open up their own hearts to you, O great king. To utter their sincere prayer unto thee. And I beg thee, Yehovah, hear our prayer. Hear the prayer of my father, my mother, of my brother, my sister of the house of Israel and forgive us all for our sins. Yehovah Zivah. Whether we pray in the English or in Spanish or in French or in Hebrew, you, O heavenly king, know all languages. Hear us and accept us. And once again, give us the culture that we have lost and allow us once again to repair our relationship with you. For we need you, yeah? We cannot survive without you. Without you, O oh Heavenly Father, we are nothing. So, Yehovah, throughout the rest of this Yom Kippur, allow us all to take it seriously. Allow us all to speak to you and try to establish a relationship with you like Abraham had and so many of the great prophets of old. Touch our hearts and our minds that we may love you, love your law, love each other, that you, O oh Heavenly Father, can preserve our lives and allow us to live happy lives on the face of the earth. We give thee, Yehovah, all praises, all honor and all glory.
forgive us. We beseech thee. Hallelujah. 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 Your Kai. Your Kai. Your Kai. We're going to have our brothers in Charlotte lead us in a Shema. Praise Yehovah. Hallelujah. O Shema Yisrael, Yahuwah Eloheinu, Yahuwah Eloheinu, Yahuwah Eloheinu, O Shema Yisrael, Yahuwah Eloheinu, Eloheinu, Yahuwah Echa. O Baruch Shem Kevo, Mahu Tole Ola, Mahu Tole Ola, Mahu Tole Ola, Mo Baruch Shem Kevo. Mahu tole ola ne ola mwae. O Shema Yisrael, Yahuwah Eloheinu, Yahuwah Eloheinu, Yahuwah Eloheinu. O Shema Yisrael, Yahuwah Eloheinu, Eloheinu, Yahuwah Echa. O Baruch Shem Kevod, Mahu tole ola, Mahu tole ola, Mahu tole ola, O Baruch Shem Kevod, Mahu tole ola, Le ola mwae. Hallelujah. This time we're going to say the benediction. Pray that Yah will bless those present as well as those online across the length and breadth of this earth. And those who don't even know, may y'all open up their eyes and pour that spirit of awakening upon his people. Hallelujah. Yivareka Yehoah, wa yishmareka. Yair Yehoah panayo aleka wikuneka. Yisa Yehoah panayo aleka. Wa yasim leka shalom. Hallelujah. Go and shake. Ha. Ha. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Be quiet. Hallelujah, be vorata.
Alléluia. 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 Yaha. 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 Amen. Sila. So to our brothers and sisters, we're not going to lower the ark until tomorrow evening. Uh, Cohen O'Dyer may have some announcements for you. I just want you to know that we want to be safe when you are close, in close proximity of persons. We're asking you to put those masks on with distance this way. And so, again, if you're outside in the fresh air, you don't have to worry about the mask if you're staying in the cultural center tonight. Please remember, Yahoo is watching, Yahoo is listening. Make sure that you don't violate on the day that you're seeking forgiveness. It wouldn't make any sense. Everyone may be seated, Elder. And again, Cohen may have some final announcements for you. Again, soon tov lakem. Hallelujah. May we all be found acceptable.